okay shall i start so a uh, very good afternoon to everyone watching us uh, live uh, so i'll be handing it over to you shortly so a very good afternoon to everyone watching us live from across the globe as we all know that we are gathered here for a webinar on metal oxide dope zeno by tio2 nanomaterials and their photocatalyst properties organized by society for uh, research and studies of nanotechnology in association with biolix so um, we have with us our uh, speaker for the afternoon uh, dr bahjad shamradi uh, associate professor kurdistan university of medical sciences we welcome you sir and we also have with us uh, our moderator for the afternoon vidhi uh, bhavsha uh she has worked with uh, as assistant professor with power university vadodara gujarat and currently she is an educator with new methods which is a learning platform uh, we welcome you ma'am to the program yeah, so now uh, without much delay we would like to hand it over to uh, sir amrad sir for the presentation go to you sir uh okay good morning ladies and gentlemen dear delegates Uh, before the presentation gets uh, started, I would like to thank uh, the Society for Research and Studies of uh, Nanotechnology. Uh, it's my pleasure to have a presentation on metal oxide, dupe, uh, zinc oxide, and titanium dioxide uh, nanomaterials and their photocatalytic application. Uh, so, I would like to start the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, fast, please. Okay, as uh, my friends, uh, Dr. Aziz, so I am associate professor in environmental health engineering from Kurdistan University of uh, Medical Science. I awarded my PhD in 2010 from University of Mysore in Karnataka, India. So the outline of presentation will be an introduction about the materials like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And I will explain what I mean by first generation, second generation, third generation, and so on. And then I'll shift to methodology developed for this work and the characterization we are commonly using for characterization of nanomaterials for uh, photodegradation application. And then environmental application, and finally come to the conclusion. As we know, uh, the photocatalytic properties of uh, nanomaterials was discovered formally in 1952 by Fuji and Honda from uh, Japan. And later, up to this time, so many materials have been synthesized, modified, or uh, fabricated for environmental application and other application of course but the main uh, aspect is a uh, photocatalytic division the first generation can be uh, characterized by uh, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide which were non doped materials that is bulky then they uh, synthesized at nano scale as we know at nano scale the ratio of uh, surface area to the volume increases and definitely the properties of the nanoparticles will be quite different from the bulky samples however there are some drawbacks or some deficiencies with these particles one is they can only use small percentage of sunlight for photocatalysis that is they are active only under uv illumination or irradiation is one of the drawbacks and the second one is they are just get agglomerated because of the uh, hydroscopic properties and they have a poor dispersion properties in media where there is water which is mostly used so this three drawbacks led to come to the next generations of the these two groups of nanomaterials, the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. 
There is a term uh, called band gap energy. If we look at the uh, physical states of the materials, we have three types of material. One is conductor, which the uh, valence band and the, the conduction band has been overlaid, so there is no band gap. On the other hand, the insulator. The insulator, they have very uh, big band gap energy, more than five electron volts, so we need a huge amount of energy to overcome the, this band gap energy. And meanwhile, we have semiconductors. Semiconductors like zinc oxide, like titanium dioxide, they are not insulator, they are not conductor. They are between of these two categories. They have a uh, little bit lower band gap energy, like 1.5 to 4.5 electron volts. So we can alter, we can change this band gap energy by applying some other impurities, which is called uh, dopants. So by doping, this band gap energy can be a little bit reduced. And what will happen, the particles will not only be active under UV light, we can shift to visible light. And one of them is sunlight, which is a free driving energy source. So by doping suitable candidates, we can reduce the band gap energy and we can have the particles, which are nanocatalysts, active under sunlight or visible light, whatever it is. So by this shifting from sunlight can be uh, modified. Hello. Next is metal oxide uh, duped zinc oxide or uh, second generation. Second generation of metal oxide uh, uh, duped zinc oxide or titanium dioxide have been developed and later the third generation can be like non-metal oxide duped zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. These two categories are active under visible light illumination. So it means they are very active and they have uh, no uh, problem even under sunlight or visible light, they can be active. Still, there is a problem that is high agglomeration and also low dispersion. For these shortages, what was introduced was in situ surface modification of metal oxide dopants that is using a suitable capping agent or surface modifiers or ligands. These are different terminology which are used. The particles could not only be active under visible light illumination, there could be control over the morphology of the nanoparticle synthesized, the agglomeration will be reduced, and the particles will be highly dispersed in the medium. So, we can modify the particles. Meanwhile, what we mean by photocatalytic reactions? By definition, we know that photocatalysis has been described as a change in the rate of chemical reaction or its initiation under the action of the light source, whether it is ultraviolet, it is visible, or it is infrared, infrared radiation in the presence of a substance that is the photocatalyst that absorbs light and is involved in the chemical transportation of the reaction partners. But what factors affect the photocatalytic properties? We have two different categories. One is extrinsic permits and the other one is intrinsic permits. The extrinsic parameters are catalyst loading or dosage, substrate concentration, that is the pollutant concentration. Pitch of the medium can play. However, I disagree with uh, 
I am agreeing with uh, this problem, but for photocatalytic degradation, it's better to have just natural or neutral pH because uh, particles like zinc oxide can be uh, dissociated or can be changed to the different uh, material like zinc chloride, which is completely different. Temperature, oxygen pressure also may help, and also photon flux. But interesting promise like allotropic forms, which is like uh, for uh, titanium dioxide, we have three different phases like brookite and ryutal and anatase. Surface area, which is very important, particles, dimensions, spherical, hexagonal, circular, crystallinity, whether it's amphorous or crystal, and surface charge by hydroxy groups. So these factors affect the uh, photocatalytic degradation properties. There are so many routes or techniques used for synthesis of nanoparticles. Each and every one has its own merits and dismerits. It's like we want to travel between these two places. One can use cab or taxi, one can use train, one can use plane, one can use bus, and so on. Which one is better depends on so many parameters, like money, like time, and so on. In the same way, for synthesis of nanoparticles, there are different routes. One of them is hydrothermal techniques. Hydrothermal is any heterogeneous or homogeneous reaction in the presence of a solvent or mineralizer, whether that is aqueous or non-aqueous, above room temperature and at pressure more than one atmosphere in a closed system. When we say in a closed system, there is no chance for getting impurities unless the part, the precursors we have used may be impure. Otherwise, the chance for getting contaminated is almost zero. Salvothermal is another technique which is used for uh, synthesis of materials, like it is any chemical reaction in the presence of a non-aqueous solvent above roof temperature and pressure greater than one atmosphere in a closed system. Supercritical flow is also is any chemical reaction where the solvent, that is water or carbon dioxide, is above its critical uh, point. Critical point for water is about 273. So uh, like that, we have different methods like soldiers. We have also you know, chemical precipitation. But what is the benefits of the hydrothermal techniques? There are some advantages. As I told you, each and every method has its own merits and merits, its own advantages or disadvantages. There are some points like chemical environment can be suitably tailored. The operator can change so many factors very easily. It's simple, clean, and less expensive, can use less energy comparing to methods like uh, supercritical fluid, or is uh, very clean comparing to chemical precipitation or soldier. Accelerate interaction between solids and solvents. We use temperature around 100 to 150, and the pressure is autogenous because we have a sealed hydrocloth or uh, hydrothermal bombs. Reaction kinetics can be highly enhanced. So uh, here also the reaction kinetic uh, uh, could be very highly enhanced. And we have a control over size and uh, shape of the bulk crystals and nanocrystals. Surface modification is in situ, so no need to uh, further like calcination or other techniques could be, uh, is not required to be done. It's also one step fabrication of the functional crystals. As I told you, there is no need to uh, do some other uh, steps. Phase purity we have and homogeneity like the EDEX uh, analysis has already confirmed it for our samples. 
No need for post-treatment of crystals or uh, products like calcination. And excellent technique for phase equilibrium studies and so on. There are so many uh, advantages of this technique over the other techniques. But back to the first one, which is uh, titanium dioxide. As we know, four uh, polymers of titanium dioxide can be found in nature, like anatase, which is a very well-known phase of the photocatalytic uh, uh, properties. It has tetragonal crystallity. Reutile, also almost in most cases, we have anatase and reutile mixed together. Brookite, which is uh, from crystallography point of view, ortho and titanium dioxide B, which is monoclinic. Among these, uh, the three natural titanium dioxide uh, more polyphones differ on their crystal structure by octahedral and by the assemblage patterns of the deceleration of each titanium octahedral chains. Space uh, groups of uh, anatase, brookhead, and ruta are I41, MD, PBCA, and P42, MNM, respectively. And as I told you, anatase is a very famous one for uh, photodegradation properties. And the brookite is the uh, lowest one. And here you can see the structure of these three different phases like anatase, brookite, and reutel. So as I told you, in most cases, we have a mixture of anatase and reutel, and rarely brookite. Brookite is amorphous. So uh, it has almost uh, zero photocatalytic properties. In this table, you can see some uh, properties of titanium dioxide uh, nanomaterial like porosity, a modulus of rupture, compressive strength, poison's ratio, fracture toughness, uh, shear modulus and modulus of velocity, resistivity, and so on. And it is, uh, uh, this table shows a comparison of uh, three different phases of uh, uh, titanium dioxide like reutile, anatase, and brookite uh, from the uh, crystallography point of view. You can see different uh, A, B, C, that is the axis of the uh, particles and cell volume, which is uh, indicate the, these dimensions. But for zinc oxide, there is ZNO crystallized in three forms also, like hexagonal versite, which is very most famous one, cubic zinc blend, and the rarely observed cubic rack salt. As I told, uh, this versite is very famous one, it's hexagonal. It's most stable and, and at ambient condition, belonging to the space group of P, uh, 6 3 mc and is characterized by two interconnecting sublattice of zinc 2 plus and O2 minus, such that each zinc ion is surrounded by a tetrahedral of oxygen ions and vice versa, and thus most common one. And here you can see the zinc versite or B4 type structure of zinc oxide here. We have zinc and oxygen atoms. Zinc oxide is, uh, uh, it has a high heat capacity and heat conductivity, low thermal expansion, and high melting temperature of zinc oxide are beneficial for ceramics. Aside from causing the inherent polarity in the zinc oxide crystal, the tetrahedral coordination of this compound is also a common indicator of SP Three-covalent bonding. However, the zinc ZNO bond also poses very strong ionic characters, and thus, does uh, zinc oxide lies on the borderline between being classed as a covalent and ionic compound. And from a material science application, zinc oxide has high refractive index, good thermal 
binding antibacterial and UV protection purpose. In fact, zinc oxide is a, one of the most uh, suitable candidate and alternative for titanium dioxide. Uh, I should mention that there are a lot of other compounds which are used for uh, photoradiation application, but here today we are talking about zinc oxide and uh, titanium dioxide. As I mentioned, the in situ surface modification is applied for nanoparticles to control their morphology, to control the agglomeration, and also to increase the dispersion. There are different surface modifiers or surfactant or capping agent or ligands used. In my previous works, I use N-butyl amine and caprylic acid. Nowadays, I am not using these surface modifiers. Uh, what is the best surface modifiers used, or which criteria we can say one uh, surface modifier should have? Uh, according to my experience, uh, one of most important factors is the uh, density of the surface modifier. Its density is more than water, so uh, a layer will be on the surface of the nanoparticles and it will result in uh, high impurity of the particles. I use the, these two types. They really reduce the agglomeration and increase the dispersion medium, but since there is a chance for impurity because of these, these two surface modifiers common because they are organic compounds. We want to reduce organic compounds, but we use these also organic compounds for surface modification. There is chance for the remaining on the surface of particles, even after several times of washing. So though these surface modifiers could be very helpful to reduce this uh, agglomeration and increase dispersity, for the electronic or other application may be very useful, but according to my experience, they initially reduce the fluidation efficiency and later they will increase. So uh, we can say not only the pollutant itself should be degraded, also we have to degrade these uh, two compounds. So they are not recommended. The methodology I adopted for uh, fabrication of nanoparticles uh, is the hydrothermal technique, as I mentioned. It's very simple and very user-friendly and also eco-friendly method. Here, for synthesis, we have the precursors and also we have surface modifiers mixed together in a Teflon liner. The Teflon liner uh, we pour the mineralizer as well as the precursor and mix it with uh, glass thread. And then after mixing and getting homogeneous compound, we keep the uh, uh, lid, the liner, Teflon liner in the autoclave, uh, general purpose autoclaves, which are uh, specific assemblers for hydrothermal purpose. Then after putting the impurity and sealing it, keeping the oven for, um, previously it was about 20 minutes, uh, the, sorry, 20 hours. Now we have reduced up to eight hours, even by keeping it for eight hours, we have uh, got uh, good particles. And uh, at 110 or maximum 115 minutes is quite enough for uh, particle synthesis. After that, keeping out the uh, liners and uh, pouring the content into a uh, beaker, uh, washing several times using double distilled water, and then uh, finally uh, keeping at room temperature for uh, 24 hours or 48 hours to get the particles dried, and then uh, sending them for characterization or also for uh, for radiation studies. As I told you, these are the precursors keeping in the uh, Teflon liners. 
and then keeping in the outer clip, general purpose outer clip. There are different sizes of Teflon liners from minimum 25 <laughs> milliliters up to 150, even more can be uh, applied. Then keeping in the oven, uh, temperature, pressure control, and then we can get the particles synthesized. The materials synthesized by me are uh, shown in this slide, like manganese, uh, zinc oxide, iron, tungsten, molybdenum, nickel, cadmium, chromium, neodymium, indium, barium, cerium, copper, and so on. In the same way for titanium dioxide also, MNW, titanium, iron, tungsten, molybdenum, nickel, cadmium, chromium, medium, indium, barium, cerium, and also copper, the titanium I have uh, synthesized. And uh, right now, one of my MSc students is working on zirconium, uh, zirconium doped zinc oxide, and one PhD is working on aluminium bismuth, um, K or potassium or vanadium. And we are mixing with uh, iron to get uh, some uh, magnetic properties. In the same way for titanium also we are working. But the characterization and environmental application of the particles. Uh, one by one I am going to show you the characterization. Here you can see XRD of uh, molybdenum uh, titanium dioxide. We use this uh, compound for pharmaceutical wastewater degradation. And here you can see the particles have been uh, completely uh, duped into the lattice of uh, titanium here using two different uh, uh, surface modifier like uh, caprylic acid and uh, butyl amine. And here you can see the lattice parameter like AC uh, in angstrom, A to C ratio, and here we have cell volume and of this uh, present work and there is the bulky pure titanium dioxide, and when we have used dopants 2% and 5% molar ratio. And here is a FTIR, as you can see, by increasing the amount of surface modifier, the peak intensity has increased. And uh, here are different, uh, different uh, functional groups can be seen on the particles. There is the uh, SEM and TM, there is transmission electron microscopy and scan electron microscopy of the molybdenum doped titanium dioxide nanoparticles. Uh, these two figures are SEM and these four are TM. As you can see, they are in a set of uh, tetragonal, they are spherical, almost spherical particles and very low agglomerated and single crystals can be seen here. Uh, here is dynamic uh, light scattering. There is uh, uh, particle size distribution, histograms and polygons for different uh, materials like 2%, 5% of uh, dopants and the different concentration of the Caprylic acid or in butyl amine as surface modifiers, we have got such small particles. Band gap energy uh, was also calculated here is a for pure zinc oxide, uh, for titanium dioxide, and here for modified molybdenum, different two and five percent of uh, molybdenum to titanium dioxide. As we can see, the band gap has produced and the particles could be used under sunlight radiation. When we uh, dupe the particles, and here is some uh, pharmaceutical uh, wastewater samples we collected from one of the wastewater plants uh, in uh, Mexico City, and we photographed the particles, and you can see here the results of the work was published in environmental technology. The other particle is a nodium duped titanium dioxide, which we use for municipal wastewater. And here again, you can see the XRD, 
there is pure, there is surface modifier, and there is two percent and five percent uh, neodymium duped uh, titanium dioxide. And here you can see the band gap energy changes of this particle. This uh, paper was published in Journal of Environmental Science and Health Part A. And here also you can see FTIR uh, spectra of the uh, particles for reagent grade and also for modified undoped titanium and there is 5% uh, nodium or validium for these different uh, particles. Here also there is the TM of a nodium duped titanium dioxide using 2 to 5% different figures A, B, C, D and different uh, concentration or uh, we can say different uh, more ratio of N-butyl amine from 0.8 to 1.4 we used for these particles. Also we can see spherical particles we have got. Again DLS for this particle there is dynamic light scattering. Uh, as we know for different uh, particles different characterization is required. Since uh, the main objective of this work is for photocategorization. So, uh, phase purity could be confirmed by XRD. Morphology changes can be confirmed by CM. Functional groups can be characterized by FTIR. DLS, that is light, uh, dynamic light scattering, can be used for uh, size distribution. And uh, since it, they are not nano absorbents, bit is rarely used for characterization. And here there is effect of catalyzed dosage on the photocatalyzed uh, uh, efficiency under sunlight and other UV light we can see. And there's a, uh, for uh, this one is a region grade as we can see region grade also for UV was almost the same because there is no dopant, but when we doped with a, a suitable dopant here, nadium, we can see very uh, good uh, differences between undoped, that is bulk compound, and doped particles. Here, for zinc oxide, we published this paper in a nanoscale. There is two different categories of material, medium dupe zinc oxide, using here imbutyl amine and capric acid. As you can see, for capric acid, we have uh, new peaks, which indicates impurities or some peaks related to capric acid. But for imbutyl amine, we surface modified, and no uh, new peak was observed. And here we can see the effect of dopant on the structure. FTR also, you can see here again for NBUTAL amine, we have some uh, changes in the functional groups. However, in the case of NBUTAL amine, the particle, the surface modifier could be washed off and uh, Neo peaks uh, were correspond to the modifier we used and also dopants we used. Here also again the same uh, FTL. The beauty of work is here single crystals separated and hexagonal could be again uh, distinguished from the uh, SEM of the neodymium duped zinc oxide particles. The morphology can confirm that what we want. Another particles which we uh, synthesized and published was the tungsten duped uh, titanium dioxide using for amaranth and uh, FCB uh, dyes protection. We published it in Catalyst Science and Technology. Here, you can see uh, Miller index on the uh, different particles and also this bulky or region grade uh, 
carbon dioxide without any dopants. Here is the surface modified, and here two percent or five percent of the tungsten duped. Tungsten is one of the best candidates for uh, doping. And here also with uh, using capric acid and in butyl amine as two different uh, surface modifier we used. And here change in lattice parameters like 3.7845 is A axis in the case of reagent grade. Once we have used the tungsten, the uh, A axis has changed slightly. And finally, the cell volume has uh, almost increased, which is because of the tungsten we have used. The functional groups also in the same way could be seen on the FTIR spectra of uh, uh, different uh, region grades of uh, time dioxide and modified with different concentration of surface modifier you can see here. Here again, in the case of imbutyl amine, whether is capric acid. TM of uh, nanoparticles, we got very small particles, in the case of 50 nanometers, we achieved by this method. And particle size distribution, very small one, in the case of 5% dopants and lower one. Uh, here again is band gap energy changes for 2%, 5% using whether imbutyl amine or uh, using capric acid we got. As I mentioned, we used uh, these particles for fluidation of two um, uh, dyes model. One was amaranth and the other one was brilliant blue FCF, which uh, were degraded uh, under different conditions. Another particles we synthesized was manganese duped zinc oxide for their removal. Here again, changes in the structure. We didn't observe new peaks. So it means the particle have been uh, duped in the structure of the zinc oxide. Here are also the band cap energy. And uh, in this table, we can see again uh, A axis and C axis, that is, that is parameters of uh, particles. And also, uh, here we can see the cell volume of the particles. Again, hexagonal zinc oxide have been uh, uh, confirmed. And for size distribution, we use the SLSA static light scattering. This also is an alternative to DLS, which could be used. In some cases, uh, some researchers uh, use Digimizer so they can determine the particle size from the CM itself. Here is the effect of a uh, catalyst umbrellium blue F and uh, different conditions. Here we can see uh, XRD patterns of uh, iron duped zinc oxide, which used for direct blue 71 is a model day. It was published in Water Science and Technology. And uh, here is different part, as we can see, for different ratios of the dopants. There's, uh, we can see we got the different efficiency. And in most cases, 1% dopant give better efficiencies than other ranges from 0 to 9. As we know, if we add from 0 to and below 10%, the properties of the compound is called doped particles, and by 10, it will be called as nanocomposite. Here, effect of uh, dosage in milligram per list for pure and modified one, here effect of pH, effect of uh, day concentration, that is common as the day concentration increases, the efficiency reduces, 
And here also is the effect of time. Initially, it's like first order and then it will reduce the efficiency. So it means uh, it's like sort of first order reaction. Uh, the other one was uh, iron duped titanium dioxide for dispersed orange 25, which was uh, published in the sanitation and uh, water treatment. Here you can see the XRD of the iron duped titanium dioxide. And here this table again shows the uh, data we uh, collect, uh, calculated by Chexel software, which is a free shareware from crystallography association. You can download and use it based on the XRD data. You can uh, calculate the cell firmness and cell volume of the particles. Here again, effect of pH for bulky and doped particles. In this case, uh, as exception, we uh, used BET, and you can see uh, different parameters of uh, BET for uh, these particles. Here's the same as uh, you can see, all of the particles are almost spherical, not uh, tetragonal, which is uh, for uh, different concentration of the particles, of the dopants. Okay. Data particles is a copper duped zinc oxide for uh, RB5, which is a model that we used. And here you can see mirror index. Uh, on the uh, zinc oxide uh, XRD. And here is a, a CM for these particles. We can see the hexagonal structure. And FTIR here is uh, almost same as the uh, bulky one, uh, pure one, but uh, the incentive has increased. Also band gap energy was uh, uh, calculated using the indirect uh, band gap energy. The other particle which uh, we synthesized was uh, chromium duped zinc oxide, and we used it for aniline, uh, uh, aniline photogration. It was published in scientific reports. Here you can see the XRD. If you here just notice, if you uh, see different uh, figures of uh, FTR, it indicates that we have used different instruments under different conditions and uh, under different preparations. So that is why here uh, you can see after several times washing and here no uh, surface modifier was used. So that is why on this slide onwards, you can uh, see just the uh, FTR, real FTR without any functional groups. I also uh, check cell calculated uh, cell promise. And here for different types of uh, nanoparticles before immobilization on the surface, because uh, we use the uh, sand glass, uh, sand glass glasses for uh, spraying the particles on this uh, sand glass glasses and here you can see attacks of the particles and here before and after photoradiation what has happened to the surface of the sand blast glasses here is almost homogeneous here we have some other different uh, thickness of the particles here, and morphology has almost changed. And also here you can see that the index of these two before photoradiation after uh, photoradiation. So the properties, the morphology also has increased. And if we see here some impurities, it could be uh, contributed to the uh, pollutant is aniline photoradiated on the surface of the particles. Here's also a GC of the uh, 
degraded annually. And here is the hard retention time, hydrogen retention time, there is a contact time under sunlight and uh, different concentration of the annealing used. Here is chromium duped uh, titanium dioxide for the regulation of uh, RB5 uh, uh, dye. As you can see again, for in the case of titanium dioxide duped with uh, chromium, we have a uh, Sephiric particles, and uh, it has showed highly pure particles, just chromium, titanium, and oxygen. And functional groups, you can see here, the functional groups has uh, changed because of the presence of the um, the compounds on the particles. After fluidation, we have taken this one. Here we used uh, hydrogen peroxide as enhancer for fluidation studies. So you can see as the increase of the uh, hydrogen peroxide concentration deficiency also has increased. And here uh, at different times from 30 minutes to 120 minutes, we have fluidation as we can see as the time increases, the efficiency also increases. Here, effect of pH for uh, UV was almost the same, but in the case of sunlight, it had effects and so on. The other particle we synthesized was uh, barium uh, duped titanium dioxide, uh, which we used for. Uh, degradation of another dye as a model, which was acid red 18. Uh, and uh, you can see here the XRD of the barium duped uh, titanium and FTIR, which shows that the particles have been duped properly. And here the morphology also of the duped uh, particles and index, which is uh, same from the same and index analysis together, and here we can see highly pure particles. And uh, here we uh, can see the fluidation properties, uh, like as effect of different pHs, different uh, uh, concentration of a uh, dye, and different uh, uh, dosage of the particles. Another uh, one is zinc oxide here is just for uh, properties because this paper, uh, the characterization results was uh, already explained as we, uh, I mentioned it was published in Nanoscale. Here we published this paper in Photochemical Journal of Photochemistry and Photobiology, uh, A Chemistry. There is uh, for leachate photoreaction. As we know, leachate is one of the most uh, polluted uh, liquids in the uh, environment, which is uh, COD is uh, nearly about uh, 100 milligram per litre, and its BOD could be from 2,000 to 30,000 milligram per litre. So it indicates, compared to uh, leather wastewater, which has a COD of around 4,000 milligram per litre, which means very highly uh, toxic uh, liquid we used as post treatment because there was a, a treatment plant in the uh, landfill site. So after that, uh, uh, we collected the treated leachate, which was also very uh, polluted. We degraded it, and here you can see different uh, parameters and uh, the results here. One of the softwares uh, which help the researchers to give better uh, presentation of their work is uh, uh, RSM, there is uh, Response uh, Surface Methodology, RSM. RSM uh, could be uh, carried out using the uh, MATLAB or using a design expert 
we use design expert for this one. Uh, there are some Mercedes suffer, uh, for example, the number of runs will be reduced. The interaction between parameters could be interpreted and we can see the actual and predicted uh, position properties and traction of the parameters like pH with leachate concentration and so on. So here we use the, this software for optimization of the conditions. Here we can uh, see uh, cadmium dupe zinc oxide. Here also we got pure particles and the result was uh, published in the water science and technology. Here is uh, the structure studies of the nanoparticles. And here the FTIR, which shows band gap, uh, sorry, the functional groups have not uh, changed very much. And here, single crystals can be seen. The small single crystals, uh, single crystals, hexagonal crystals. Mm, here again, effect of a different compound. Like one person had a very good uh, for the radiation efficiency. So for the rest of experiments, we use one person. And uh, here you can see effect of some scavenger and enhancers like we use different compounds to see whether they have uh, they increase the efficiency or decrease the efficiency and here you can see some of compounds uh, were neutral and some had high efficiency and number of uh, also uh, running was uh, reported the other one was uh, so the uh, serum dupe the zinc oxide and we use for synthetic uh, beverage uh, wastewater and uh, here again we can see uh, the XRD of the compounds and FTIR as you can see just intensity has increased the other peaks are almost the same and here the pit promise now also here almost pure particles we got. However, the CM was not so perfect because the, it was good, but as you know, uh, the particles have been agglomerated. So I mentioned that uh, nowadays I'm not using surface modifiers because they result to second contamination. And here is the Parameters like COD, pH, electrical conductivity, temperature, turbidity, and TSS. And you can see here the efficiency. So it uh, shows the uh, higher uh, properties, uh, higher efficiencies of these particles. If we come to conclusion, we can say various uh, nano-sized crystals with different morphology could be successfully synthesized by hydrothermal method. It doesn't mean that the other methods are useless. No, never ever. Uh, every method has its merits and dismerits. Here, since we don't need higher temperature, we didn't use uh, supercritical for it. Since we want pure particles, a closed system like hydrothermal is one of the good methods because in the case of chemical precipitation, there is chance for getting contaminated. Crystal obtained show good morphological variation with respect to the starting charges and dopants in the reaction medium. As we uh, see, there was a control over morphology of the titanium dioxide especially because particles were spherical. In the case of uh, hexagonal also was slightly changed. Surfactants like capric acid and imbutalamine could be used for in situ surface modification for metal oxide to titanium and dioxide, which makes these nanoscale crystals either hydroscopic or hydrophilic. However, they are not recommended for the particles which are used for fluidization because, as I mentioned, there is chance for uh, getting uh, the particles contaminated by the uh, capric acid or 
uh, end vitamins, both of them are organ compounds. Modifier was used uh, to inhibit the agglomeration and control over the growth, as I showed. And these nano-sized crystals are highly active in the division of various toxic organisms. We previously used the slurry uh, form of the compounds. Nowadays, we are fixing or immobilizing them on the, uh, some surfaces like it's like sand blasted glasses and so on. Now, here there is uh, the chance of deviation or releasing of nanoparticles reduced. Nowadays, we have uh, shifted to make them uh, magnetize using iron as a uh, base. So the particles uh, could be recovered simply by a magnetic. So I hope you enjoyed by this uh, presentation. And uh, there are some slides introducing Iran to your audience if you get a chance to travel to Iran in future, you are more welcome. Uh, here there are some snaps of different places like Ferdosi, who was a very famous poet. is is shrine in Mashhad in the north uh, east of Iran. Here is Hafez shrine in Shiraz in the south uh, center of Iran. And uh, here is Omar Kayam, who was a scientist, a poet also, very famous. He uh, was the first one who uh, invented the calendar. His shrine is in Neshawur, north uh, east of Iran. And uh, this Iran, the map you can see here, this the red one, uh, uh, sorry, yellow one is my uh, province, Kurdistan, Sandaj, my hometown. And there is a view of Sandaj city on the mountain, Abidar mountain. And uh, is one of the historical villages and very uh, well known Oraman or Oraman in uh, Kurdish language. Uh, you can see in the west of Iran. And here is the main Azadi circle in my city, Sandaj city. We have the biggest open cinema in the world here. There is the traditional old bazaar or market you can see and you can purchase whatever you want in this old market. This is traditional dressing of Kurdish people for men and women. And also traditional dancing. We have the dancing, Kurdish dancing style for men and women. And once again, thanks for your patience and uh, giving this opportunity to me to present and also i would like to thank the society for research and studies of nanotechnology and biologics and dr vidi yeah uh, discussion is open if you have any or other colleagues have any question and in your service thank you yes sir many thanks to you too for the such a brief explanation of the topic and for your valuable time, it is really helpful. Uh, we are having some questions on the other side from the audience. Uh, the one is from Miss uh, Sudanjana. She want to ask uh, to clear the term about allotrotic form. Allotrotic form, as I told you, uh, the particle is up because when we say nano, nano doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that if the particle is nano, could be effective for photodegradation. There are some inherent properties, like the crystallinity. Because for titanium dioxide, I told we have three different phases, like anatized, brookite, and rutile. But as we know, just anatized and small percentage of rutile have good photocatalytic degradation properties. So by that, it doesn't mean that when we have nano, definitely we have photodegradation properties. There are some other power farmers which are effective in propagation problems. Okay, thank you. And the another one is from Dr. Kamal that he asked to, uh, to he asked for the detailed definition of the pH. Uh, well, pH, see, for absorbance, we use, we change pH. 
because we know there is chance to get the uh, 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 sorry degradation efficiency higher at the basic or acid. Also, we have PSD. But in my experience, especially in the case of zinc uh, oxide, if we change the pH, I mean, if we reduce it to the acidic, definitely there is chance to get zinc chloride. Zinc chloride is quite different from zinc oxide. Again, the same previous question will come, based on topic purpose. So, uh, because the particles are not very stable, so what we suggest, we suggest just have neutral pH. So under neutral pH, we can have a better efficiency. That is true. I have published so many papers. I have reported that pH was effective. But we came to know that it's better to conduct the experiments under neutral pH, neither in acidic, neither in either or in basic conditions. Daniel, that uh, uh, to explain the principle of nano photocatalyst. But then I didn't get the question because uh, the question is uh, the to explanation of the principle of nano photocatalyst. Principle, see, for uh, nano catalyst, they don't enter the reaction; they just facilitate the reaction, enhance the facilitation. The principle is they are not get calcium, okay? But in real, in reality, definitely there is release of nanoparticles. There is a chance to be released. So we have to again add nanoparticles to overcome this proper this problem. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, iron is one of the good uh, bases substrate which can be used, and the particles could be coated on the. Uh, or make nano composite using iron. So using a magnetic can simply taken. The principle is generating of hydroxyls based OH uh, radicals. Okay, so these radicals will uh, like because as we know, uh, photoreduction is one of the advanced oxidation processes. So if you know the principle of advanced oxidation processes, definitely we know the principle of the photoreduction. In the same way. Here, generation of uh, radicals, each uh, having higher oxidation uh, potential compared to ozone or other accidents. Okay. And the another one, the questions are coming, many questions are there, but the another one that I'm going to ask is from Shadi, that what are the principles of choosing dopants? Uh, for dopants, we should have a look at the periodic table. Definitely, there are a lot of uh, choices and there are a lot of options. One is we should know whether this combo could be doped with uh, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide or not. Simply, it's like, you know, uh, maybe it's uh, funny, but it's like cooking. Simply, you can't just mix everything together and say, oh, it's good food, delicious food. Definitely there is a principle behind each of them. So the one most important one is having vacancy, there is an electron, we have to check whether these properties, this valency is available on the electron layer to share it. Then coming to toxicity, because toxicity is also very important. And then come to price from the current point of view also is very important. Ionic radius, whether it has a band gap energy, because the dopant itself has a band gap energy. If you use higher band gap energy, so we will change the band gap energy, but instead of reducing the band gap energy, it will increase the band gap energy. In the same way, there are a lot of factors, but we should be careful what we are using. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shamuradi, again for this wonderful session. You're uh, most welcome. Yeah, any other questions? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, and if you want to have collaboration, we openly and warmly welcome all of you. I have given my email address and I have given uh, the slides, it's available to you. And I hope we have a uh, 
chance to have cooperation in the future. Thank you. Thank, you, thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for the uh, beautiful and informative session. And thank you so much, ma'am, for the beautiful moderation of the session as well. So before we end this, I would like to tell all the participants who are watching us live that everyone will be receiving an email shortly with the feedback link of the webinar as well as the certificate download link of the webinar as well. So no, no participant needs to panic about how they are going to get the certificates and the feedback links. You'll be receiving an email shortly to your mailbox. So uh, uh, before we ending this, I would again like to thank uh, sir for this beautiful session and ma'am uh, for the beautiful moderation as well. Mm -hmm. We assure everyone that we will be coming shortly uh, uh, with more uh, assuring webinars in the future as well. And we will be coming up with more interesting webinars in the future with more interesting topics as well. So till the next time, we would urge everyone to stay safe during this pandemic time. As we all know what the situation scenario is outside. So we would urge everyone to stay safe. And uh, till the next time, it's goodbye from our side. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.